Welcome everyone. I see so many familiar uh, faces or I guess names out in the audience and uh, a lot of new ones and we're so glad that you're all here with us tonight. Uh, my name is Ann Peterson and I'm the Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation and I'm pleased to be able to introduce tonight's program. As we begin, we want to acknowledge and honor the original inhabitants of our various regions. Please take a moment to honor these ancestral grounds that we are collectively gathered upon and support the resilience and strength that all Indigenous people have shown worldwide. I am on the traditional territory of the Chumash people. I encourage you to name and acknowledge the Native peoples where you are located in the chat box. If you don't know whose ancestral lands you're located on, uh, Kevin McGarry on our team is going to put a website in the chat that will help you look it up. And we'll wait a few minutes. I know Naomi and I are, are looking forward to seeing um, some of these pop up in the chat. The Chumash, Ohlone, Tonga, Kumeyaay. Oh, they're moving quickly. San Inez Band, Chumash. Tahona Odom, wonderful. Weot, Barbarano Chumash. Wonderful, thank you all for, for sharing that with us. I'm very much looking forward to tonight's program along with you. Uh, the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation has enjoyed a long partnership with the Juan Bautista Danza Historic Trail. We've collaborated with the Park Service staff to create a traveling trunk for schools, interpretive panels, and a following the Anza Trail through Santa Barbara County map. The Anza Trail also figures heavily in our seventh grade school program, Where We Are From, which focuses on an immigration and migration theme and was awarded a national endowment for the Humanities Grant in 2020. I'm also proud to call uh, Park Superintendent Naomi Torres a colleague and one that I look to for inspiration because of her innovative interpretation and planning efforts for the trail. I will be learning alongside of all of you about what she has in store for her park unit and for the upcoming anniversary of the expedition in the hopes that the trust can be the best possible partner for this work. Here's a little bit more information about our speaker. Naomi Torres is the superintendent of the Juan Bautista de Anza Historic National Historic Trail. She is a conservation professional with more than 25 years of experience working to help communities form deep personal connections with their environment and heritage. Prior to joining the Anza Trail, she was the chief of interpretation at four national parks in the San Francisco East Bay and was the community outreach specialist at the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. A native of El Paso, Texas, her favorite smell is the scent of creosote that comes with the first rain in the Chihuahua Desert. We love that. And after the, uh, uh, Naomi's presentation, uh, we're going to have a Q&A and Kevin McGarry and our team is going to manage that Q&A. So we know that the chat is already getting uh, very full and we encourage you to keep adding your comments and uh, networking with, with each other in the chat. If you have questions that you'd like to be considered by our speaker during the Q&A session, please use the Q&A feature, which is next to the, the chat icon on the bottom of your screen and put those questions there. And Kevin will be uh, uh, monitoring those uh, during the presentation so we can collect them all at the end. And I think that's it for me. So with that, I'm going to uh, pass it over to Naomi. And thanks again, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Anne, and really, and the Presidio Santa Barbara for the invitation to present today. And we do share um, such a uh, such a great um, important role in uh, sharing Spanish colonial history and educational as an educational institutions, and um, we share, you know, organizational legacies and goals. Um, tonight, I'm going to share with you a brief history of the Anza expedition, what the Anza trail looks like today, and looking forward to 20, 2050, which uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, to the <laughs> 2026, the 250th anniversary of the expedition. But I'm going to start um, and with a couple of polls just to break the ice. And um, 
So we're gonna uh, have a, about four questions. And here's the first one. Which is the proper way to refer to the military leader of this historic expedition? Anza or De Anza? And um, mark your comment in the poll and we'll, we'll see what the audience thinks. Right, that full team came off. So I'm thinking that we have our, here we go. Which is the proper way to refer to the military? So 26% said Anza and 74% said the Anza. Wow, interesting. The proper way to refer to uh, the military leader is Anza. Uh, Anza was Basque and um, to say the Anza is to be saying of Anza. Um, so if my name were Naomi de Torres, you would be saying of Torres. So um, that the, the term de Anza is actually a 20th century uh, nomenclature. Um, and many of the places in California are named de Anza, but the proper way to say his name is Anza. All right, next question. This is inspired by a question that was sent in. And if Rose is in the audience, she'll Hopefully she'll have a giggle. Where's Anza buried? Under his statue in Riverside at the Presidio of San Francisco in Arispe, Sonora or at the Presidio of Tubac? Just make your selection and we'll see what you guys think. All right, here we go. Oh, three people say he should be um, under his statue in Riverside. 33%, wow, pretty mixed. 33% in uh, San Francisco, 35 inching by there, and 29%. And with, um, he is buried in Arispe, Sonora, at the church in Sonora. Um, lots of good guesses. I love the comment of uh, under his statue in Riverside. That was really, uh, really fun. Uh, one of the audience members wrote in that her dad told her when she was young that that's where Anza was buried. He also said that Mickey Mouse was behind the screen. All right, the last, oh, the second, the third question. One third of the members of the Anza expedition were of African descent, true or false? The votes are coming in, we'll see. Let's see what you think. All right, here we go. Oh, I just realized that the correct answer is an orange. Yeah, 62%, you got it, got it correct. Um, uh, the members of the expedition were of African descent. Um, they had been, uh, they were, they or their ancestors were enslaved, sent to the Caribbean and also sent to, um, to Sonora. 
primarily to work in the mines. Um, we were also uh, indigenous as well as Spanish. All right, the last question, the last poll. The Anza expedition went from Orcasitas, Sonora to San Francisco, California. On whose tribal lands did the expedition pass? This is multiple choice. You can check all that apply. All right. Wow, many, many choices. Here. Uh, this was a trick question. They were all, these are all tribal lands that the um, expedition passed through. Luloni, the Kumiai, the Chumash, Hitsan, and the Ordam. Um, and there were many, many more. Um, and, uh, and I really thank you all for um, noting the tribal lands at, on, on, uh, whose ancestral lands you, you are on. That's really beautiful to see that you're all across um, the Anza Trail. Well, thank you so much for um, participating in that poll. Um, we'll, and, uh, we'll begin a little bit with a, uh, with a presentation now. That was really fun. Um, so uh, thanks for letting me join. Uh, in the questions um, that came in, it seemed like there was a great variety of knowledge about the expedition. So. Um, some of you uh, are new to the uh, Anza Trail, uh, new to the learning about the Anza Trail, and some of you could probably make this presentation as well. So I'm going to cover a little bit of the, uh, give you a, a, a historic overview of the expedition, weave in what the Anza Trail looks like today, and, um, and then share with you some of the, you know, some broad goals that we have for commemorating uh, the 250th anniversary of of the expedition in 2025, 2026, which is, it's gonna come up quick. Um, so the Anza Trail, the Juan Bautista de Anza National Historic Trail is um, administered by the National Park Service. And for some of you that are familiar with the National, National Park Service, and there are um, over 400 sites that are set aside uh, that um, present our nation's history our heritage, as well as the natural and scenic places that are important to the, to the building of this country. The national trail system is very similar, yet uh, it does designate the trails that are important, national uh, historic trails, as well as scenic uh, and, um, and important resources, that, but they are in a linear fashion. So there are 30 national and scenic and historic trails. Uh, the ones in California include the, the Juan Bautista de Anza National Historic Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail. And then we've got some that are coming in from the end, but those are the ones that traverse California. And they contribute to the American story and the building of this nation. Um, so because of the um, significance of the expedition, the trail was established in uh, 1990 by Congress. So what was the Anza expedition? Uh, the Anza trail commemorates um, the epic journey taken in 1775, 1776, led by Juan Batista de Anza. Um, it took 240 men, women, and children. Um, they were total, well, 
total 30 families. Um, they brought them from Orcasitas, from Orcasitas, uh, Sonora, north up through uh, what is now the border of Arizona and Mexico and Nogales. They followed the rivers past Tucson, followed Gila Bend um, over to the Colorado, crossing the Colorado and Yuma, up um, through uh, onto Borrego, through Riverside, headed to Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, to Monterey, and then all the way to San Francisco, to found the Presidio and Mission of San Francisco in 1776. So this is what it looks like in 1776. On the, um, on the right hand, you see a map of what the European countries saw, saw the new world as. They were territories to be claimed. And uh, the green part is the part that Spain um, claimed. And, but yet in, around, in 1775 and a little bit before then, there was concern that to establish a northernmost territory, there were presidios up to Monterey, but there was a real uh, interest in establishing a northern, a northern coast and creating a colony of, of people to uh, really establish a northernmost coast. Um, so you can see how the countries, European countries, saw the New World and what they would claim as their own. On the left, you see a map of California and the rich diversity of um, tribal communities that were all in California. They were here autonomous um, before the Spanish came. <clears throat> so uh, why, do, why would you leave your homeland? Um, uh, and oftentimes you leave your own homeland for opportunity. And that's what, when Anza came around to the towns of and what are now the states of Sinaloa and Sonora, um, the people that he was able to recruit, he recruited soldiers to uh, remain in the Presidio and in San Francisco and um, colonize, colonize the area. He requested that um, these soldiers bring their families so that they remain in the area. Um, and so if you have nothing to, re if, you, if you really don't have any options um, and this opportunity for land um, once you arrive um, for, uh, 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 and for even to be able to dream to, for a better future, um, that was a really good, good option. This also, um, for those at that time, Spain, Spain had a, a caste system um, where the top of the caste were uh, those that were from Spain. Um, the bottom of the caste were those that represented the indigenous peoples in Mexico or what is now Mexico, and also the um, people who had been enslaved or whose ancestors had been enslaved. So, um, and the, uh, the darker, the darker you were, the lower on the cast you were, and the less rights that you had. So this was a great opportunity for um, for those uh, in the lower castes um, with, with no opportunity to move to the frontier, where there are less restrictions, um, and and have some opportunity. And so a third of the uh, expedition was Afro Latino, the, another third Indigenous, and then another in the mixture, and and it was all a mixture of that. Uh, um, uh, but those were the ones that joined ANSA. The expedition took eight months, 1800 miles, departing from Orcasitas in late September 1775 and arriving in the spring in San Francisco in 1776. Um, there, uh, with all of those individuals, 240, plus the muleteers that supported them, um, the only one person died along the way. Um, Maria Pinuelas, who died in childbirth just outside of Tuba. <clears throat> they camped every night. Um, so what we know of the expedition are two diaries, the diary of Anza, who was the military leader, um, who told us pretty much what they saw, and then the diary of Font, who gave us a much, be uh, much, robust, much more robust picture of the expedition. And I just wanted to share with you, although you're ca uh, calling in from all different places, we, this is a program of the Santa Barbara uh, Trust Presidio and the Trust for Historic Preservation. 
And um, so this is a diary from February 24th, um, 1776. With the dense fog and signs of rain, we raised our camp. Having traveled two leagues, we reached the first, first village of the channel of Santa Barbara, along which we went in the same direction at three o'clock. We came to the Rancherias del Rincón, where a halt was made for the night. In these two villages, we found an abundance of good fish, some of which it has been estimated are more than a foot long, exclusive of the tail, especially the female sardines, which are full of spawn. So back to the Rancherias, 225 leagues. Um, this is just a sample of the diaries that really give us a sense of what the landscapes, the, um, the natural resources were like and, uh, as they came through. Um, and also the, the numbers of people that, uh, that they encountered, the villages that they encountered. Sometimes they contacted the people in the villages, sometimes they found them uh, vacant, um, perhaps because they did not want to encounter the Spanish coming through. Um, but it's these diaries really give us a really good sense of what early California looked like. So finally, in, uh, in March of 1776, the entire group arrived in, in uh, Monterey, the Presidio at Monterey. Anza uh, took a few men along with him um, with Font. Uh, they departed um, from Monterey to San Francisco, they established the location of the Presidio that was going to be there. A few days later, they established um, the Mission San Francisco de Asís, better known as Mission Dolores. And, um, and then they headed out into the East Bay, uh, uh, heading down, down to Alviso and up across, up, up across into the East Bay. And um, <clears throat> to, do, to take a look to see where uh, it was an exploratory trip to see perhaps maybe if they could get over to the other side of the peninsula um, or uh, even find a way, a more, a more direct return back. Uh, they headed up to what is now Antioch, saw the Thule marshes, realized that they couldn't get across and returned back to Monterey. Uh, on June 27, 1776, uh, Moraga, the second in command, brought uh, the members of the expedition to San Francisco um, and to establish that presidio after it was noted that um, every June um, in non-COVID years, <laughs> the descendants of the expedition members oops, uh, commemorate their arrival. All right, so the trail today um, the trail, the, the Juan Bautista de Anza National Historic Trail was created by Congress in 1990. Um, and actually it was, in, it was um, established in part because in 1976, the Bicentennial Commissions of Arizona and California were really interested in commemorating this, this ride. This is what was happening when the United States was commemorating the, the Bicentennial, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. So this is our story on the, on the West Coast. And um, so eventually the, the trail was um, created in Congress in 1990 and administered by the park. Here you see um, the members of, of our, our current staff. There's three of us. Um, and uh, we also uh, administer the trail with some interns um, that come with us throughout the year. For in our strategic plan, just uh, looking for the next five to six years. Um, we, we have uh, ambitious goals and our tagline being that we're one trail, but there's many stories and we have a shared history. So this work cannot be done just by the uh, staff and we work in partnership with so many partners along the route, including the Presidio um, uh, of Santa Barbara. And uh, these are just some examples of, of the partners that we work with. I do want to highlight, and I hope I don't offend anybody not by not highlighting yours, but um, one of my favorite is Amtrak. Uh, there are, we have a trails and rails program where in non-COVID times, um, there are volunteers that ride up from Santa Barbara North and some that, and ride, that ride up right down from um, San Jose. And in the viewing car, you can hear them share with you uh, information about the Anza Trail as well as other historical 
uh, points of information as you pass through the viewing part. So these are some of the things that have been identified in our planning efforts, in our interpretive planning. We speak about migration, about diversity, uh, the diversity of the expedition, um, diversity of the, uh, of the landscapes and the peoples that were already here, um, family, and then, and especially the impact on uh, Native California, both the Native peoples as well as the landscapes. And we talk a lot about change. <clears throat> and uh, we will continue to do that in, into 2020, um, but really be much more deliberate about, about that, and especially uh, that of uh, Native California and, uh, and, uh, and the impact of colonization. So you see this uh, with our partners um, here demonstrated um, at the Presidio, um, the Officers Club. Um, you see this with partners along the trail through um, programs um, and music, such as uh, this presented at the Peralta Adobe, uh, the music of early California. And you see it with reenactors at historic sites like uh, in Tubac, a ride from to an annual ride from Tubac to Tumacapuri. <clears throat> um, you also see it online. Um, and this year, doing during COVID times, um, we're relying a lot of online of an online presence. And um, I just want to point this one out. We really the ex the trail runs through uh, um, twenty counties. Um, and many of those are have a high percentage of uh, Latino uh, Latino communities, um, and so much of our interpretation is both in English and Spanish. This is a Spanish colonial trail, and so we really try to uh, present the story and the, and the interpretation in English and Spanish. Uh, just as COVID hit, and we were closed down, um, the corrido de Anza that we have been working with Los Sensores. Um, which is a musical group here in Richmond, California, um, that we, we were able to release it. So if, um, a corrido is a song story, um, and it's a tradition in Mexico, and we tell a story, and it's a very lively tune. Um, I encourage you to take a look at it online. You can head over to our, our website and, uh, and listen to it. It's a long story. It's about nine minutes, um, but it really gives you a good sense of, of the story of the expedition and a great opportunity to reach out to different, different people. So in addition to the programs um, and the emphasis, the interpretive uh, messages we have, we also are charged with creating trail. Um, there's a long-term goal of creating, of developing, having a contiguous recreational trail from Nogales all the way up to San Francisco where you could a multi a multi-use trail you could walk bike um, hike uh, ride your horse um, in some places uh, there's an ATV on the trails um, but that's a long-term goal we have a long way to go there's about uh, 400 miles of certified trail um, so we have a really long way to go and the big the most um, the toughest areas are going to be in you know, um, in areas that aren't on public lands. So if you do represent a county um, and there's some potential for recreational trail that's on the, the, the route of the expedition, I encourage you to reach out to us um, and see what might happen, what we might be able to do. Um, here's a map of what, what that looks like. Um, there's a historic corridor in, demonstrated in this map. That, that's the brown. This is the area of um, the East Bay, kind of where I live, I'll point to you where I live kind of near where the Berkeley sign is. And um, uh, that's a historic corridor. Um, if you've driven in, in California, you may have seen the signs, a historic route. There's an auto route um, that you can ride on. And if you run across, it says historic route, you're right on the historic corridor. And if you see the sign that says auto route, that means you're um, near, near, but not quite on the, the historic corridor. And then um, you'll see the recreational trail signs if you're in the East Bay, much of the East Bay Hills is marked, marked in um, 
I live places like uh, Santa Monica Mountains and um, uh, and in uh, some BLM land like Fort Ord. <clears throat> and also in Southern Arizona, really a significant portion of the recreational trail that's been signed is both in uh, the Santa Cruz County as well as Pima County. So we have an ambitious goal by 2026 to get much of this recreational trail on the ground. So one could follow this um, if you so desire to follow this uh, entire route uh, by walking, riding, or, or biking. <clears throat> Additionally, well, we uh, have been working with uh, the state of Sonora to mark the trail. The first third of the expedition route is in the state of Sonora, beginning in Orcasitas. And, um, uh, they have marked the route, the historic route. Um, here we see the route in Imuris, which is just a little north of Hermosillo. Um, they have created a loop of, of the Anza expedition um, where you could ride on the historic route, drive on the historic route, and then head up into the foothills of the Sierra Madre to some of the beautiful towns up there like Bahamichi and Arispe. And that route is the uh, tourist route. Um, and primarily that's because those are the homelands of Anza. Uh, this is the, uh, the church in Arispe where Anza is buried. He's up in the front near the mausoleum. Um, and I encourage you to visit. It's a beautiful area up there in Arispe. So, um, that's where I'll stop with the details of this expedition and some of the some of the things um, that we have been presenting. We continue to want to grow and be more deliberate about creating recreational trail and um, telling the story and growing our partners and sharing that. <clears throat> but I also want to really touch upon um, the fact that this is a colonial story and and that um, in the telling of this story, we tell the story of the expedition, um, the places, the importance, the impact, um, but we really skirt around the true impact. And we really need to come to grips with the true meaning of this legacy of colonization. The Anza expedition was a colonizing expedition and, and um, with the intent to take land from autonomous people. As you saw, it was rich and filled with uh, California Indians. Um, the years that ensued after uh, this colonizing expedition were filled with brutality. And um, yes, the uh, colonial Spain wanted to convert the Indians, but they were treated like children. And, um, and it wasn't really a choice. Um, so we really need to come to grips with that and acknowledge that history. And it's hard and it's, um, it's muscles that we're just learning to, to move around and it's difficult and um, there's shame involved in that. Um, but before we can really truly represent this full history of this time, we really need to acknowledge and recognize um, the true impact of, of colonization, the brutality, the genocide. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this summer, it really became apparent. I think uh, these images will probably ring true to you. And that is um, uh, this summer after the murder of George Floyd, uh, we begin to see Confederate statues be taken down. And um, the staff, we talked about, what are we gonna, you know, what are we gonna do with them if the Anza statue comes down? And then it came a little closer when the Oñate statue came down. Um, in Santa Fe, and um, he's definitely a very different man than Anza, but still uh, he's, his uh, statue represents this colonization story. And um, the statues are, uh, uh, represent a, an approach that's uh, it's challenging. And um, so uh, luckily the statue of Anza wasn't taken down. Um, and, uh, but I think it's really important and it really drives home the complexity of this story that a monument to one man doesn't really tell the complexity of this story 
the impact and um, that and that that it had on um, at that time and and also the legacy of that. <clears throat> um, we have tried to share the stories of the tribal communities, oftentimes in places like Mission Dolores uh, and the missions. Um, and often the stories sometimes are one of their, um, their existence there, sometimes of their um, resilience, of their survival. There were uh, 300,000 native Californians and, uh, and they were reduced to about a 10th. Um, in, in number during colonization for, uh, so that was, actually I'm not quite sure about that, but they were really reduced. And we often talked about the resilience, their survival, and even, um, even stories of resistance. Some of you may be aware of those stories of Tripurina. And even during the Anza expedition, the expedition remained in, at Mission San Gabriel in Los Angeles, while Anza and a small group of soldiers went to squash a rebellion in San Diego. But the indigenous people along the trail are more than just these stories uh, framed by the colonization story. And so, although we're, we want to tell those stories, those stories of resistance, of resilience, of survival, we also want to tell the story of the richness of, um, of these people, of the people along the, um, the expedition route. Um, and we're starting small, we're taking baby steps. The first, uh, the first project that we have going, um, and it's been going for a few years now, is a project with IANTA, the American Indian Alaska Native Tourism Association, um, where uh, we will create a 80 page booklet, uh, a tribal travel itinerary. We're really using the line, the route of ANZA to highlight the richness, uh, the cultural heritage um, uh, with the communities, the indigenous communities along the route um, in their words uh, and looking at the businesses, uh, uh, the ones that um, the tribes want to share um, and to recruit also um, tourism to those areas. And especially because so tourism is really hurting these, um, these areas are also hurting as well. So hopefully um, once um, COVID allows us to travel, um, we'll be able to see the richness of, and the heritage of the peoples along, along the route. <clears throat> uh, related to this project is also with IANTA, um, we will have a map. Um, we were able to, um, well, the IANTA is able to bring in um, a cartographer, Dr. a well-known cartographer, Dr. Margaret Pierce, who's um, who's very well recognized uh, for the work that she's done, especially in Canada, of mapping um, places in, uh, with the tribal references in the landscapes and the areas of interest by, in tribal names. So she'll be creating a, uh, preparing a map along, of the Anza, along the Anza Trail of the important places and uh, place names in the tribal languages um, along the route. Um, these are baby steps that we're taking to center these voice, the voices of um, Native Californians and those in Arizona. Um, we really want to be sure that we ele elevate those voices and uh, it's going to be uh, muscles we haven't, uh, like I said, muscles we haven't really uh, used, but um, and partnerships and um, really a lot of listening, a lot of understanding of the other part of this story, what um, both in the past and what is, what is present now. And making sure that um, the people, the resilience, the traditions that have continued um, through, throughout this trail and uh, continue on today. Um, and we're hopeful that with this effort by 2020, we will have a much better understanding and really a, a, even be confident in the way that we talk about this colonial story that really recognizes um, the autonomous people that were already here um, and their presence uh, today, as well as being able to tell this the colonial story. Um, I encourage you to uh, reach out to me uh, and also take a look at our website. 
um, if you have, I just touched on the history of this stuff. So um, there's a couple of websites, uh, nps.gov, Juba, and then onzahistorictrail.org has a really great map where you can pull up the campsites and check out the diary entry. And then you can also follow us on social media. Uh, we're on Instagram at onzahtrail.nps, uh, as well as on Facebook. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Naomi, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Um, we're going to go into Q&A now. Um, before I do that, I'm going to, um, let's see here, just change my view really quick. Um, my name is Kevin McGarry. I'm the Associate Director for Public Engagement at the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation. And I really want to um, thank everyone for not just joining us this evening, but for your participation, the people who sent me questions ahead of time and the people who, uh, if you've been paying attention to the chat, a lot of people that were sending um, messages to just the panelists, so just Naomi and me, but a lot of people were um, in the chat sharing things about their family history and um, um, and, and had questions and we have a lot of questions and we only have about 15, 20 minutes of more of Naomi's time. So I'm gonna, um, we might not get to all your questions, but um, um, I will, I would, I would like to let you know, for those of you that asked me if this is being recorded, it is. And we put, um, we put all of our lectures up on our website and I'm gonna put the website in the chat in just a minute here, as well as our website to become a member of the trust. So if you're interested in, in seeing more um, and attending more programs like this, or you want to learn more about our organization, I'll put those two links in the chat shortly. Um, but um, um, I, so, I, so we're going to get started with Q&A because I don't want to waste any more time. So here we go. Um, one, a good question that came through um, was how much of the trail is also a part of El Camino Real, um, um, if, if, if any of it? Um, so the El Camino Real, it follows the route of the missions. So let's see where they hit the first mission was uh, at uh, Mission San Gabriel. And then as you continue up, there were only three missions at the time. So um, it, it pretty much follows the, the route of the, of the missions from Mission San Gabriel on up. Uh, another question we had was who, who paid for the for the expedition, um, where did the money come from, and and how, how were the people selected that that went? Uh, it was uh, well, colonial Spain was really interested, and uh, so they paid for much of the expedition. But um, uh, Anza also uh, he he was Basque, and there was Basque that were in the state of Son in what is now Sonora that also supported him in that he didn't get like all government things, you don't ever get enough money. <laughs> so they needed some private funds to help assist with that. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, there's so many good questions here. Um, can you elaborate on some of the differences between the, um, the Anza expedition and the Portola, Portola expedition? Um, anything that was like a major difference between those two and, and um, what happened on the expedition? Well, Portola was exploratory. He came with a small group. He arrived at what is now known as Sweeney Ridge and he saw the bay. Um, so he, uh, that was more exploratory. The Anza expedition was a colonizing expedition where individuals came to actually to live at their to their destination, to live in the bay. Great, thank you. Let's see, I have a few more of that. Um, here's a good question. Given the hardships of such a long journey, um, did Anza ever have to quell rebellions or mutinies or have any uh, confrontations within their own party? Um, there were a few uh, cases. Um, one, I didn't know that there was a huge mutiny, but um, the muleteers that were hired, um, they were actually pretty green. With not enough money, Anza had to hire some um, muleteers that were kind of green and he cut, got them at a good good cut rate. Um, and they were loading those mules up more than they should have, much more than they should have. And so a few of them ran away. Um, 
somewhere near um, what is now uh, the town of Mariana. And um, uh, they were actually caught and uh, they were whipped. And actually there's a location along that, the route is called Puerto de la Azotado, the, the port of the whipping. Um, and so they were brought back and uh, well, they returned uh, to complete the mission, the expedition. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, another good question. Um, someone's asking about the significance of, of La Canola in Southern Arizona. I don't know if that's just a random um, location or if it's a part of the, the story. It's part of the expedition. Uh, it's one of the campsites. Canola uh, uh, Ranch is now a, a, a park in my Pima County. But that Canoa is where uh, Maria Pinuelos died, the woman that died in childbirth. She died, and then uh, the next day she was taken and buried up near um, San Javier del Bar. Um, another, um, Donald asked about what can you tell about tell us about uh, Juan Pablo Grijalba, corporal in the second expedition. Um, I that's be, about all I can say about him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a corporal in the second expedition. Yeah, maybe uh, visit the trail website and, and or, or follow up with that question with Naomi. Naomi, she can get you more information. Um, we have a lot of uh, questions about. Um, oh, here's a good one. Did any members of the expedition drop out along the way uh, or settle in different parts along the journey, or did they? Did everyone complete the full journey? Um, to your knowledge. Um. I'm not confident about that answer. Eventually, some did end up in other parts of the uh, trail once they uh, arrived. Um, I know um, uh, Felicia Arbayo, the, the widow, ended up. I think actually she's the one that remained. You know, I, I can't confidently answer that. These are some good questions, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but they're really, uh, I kind of knew like some of these, some of the people in the audience could tell this with much greater detail than I. <laughs> um, well, is there a place, uh, like the best place to find answers to these more detailed questions you have, a, like besides maybe the website, but also um, uh, resources that you could uh, elaborate about that they could they could use to find more information? Uh, I, I would direct them to the website um, as well as onzahistorictrail.org. Uh, and there's much more. There's also uh, books that have been written if you're interested in um, uh, a book, a book about the expedition abroad. One um, heyday books. In one, we did it with Vladimir uh, Guerrero, um, as well as there's one that was done by um, ab uh, about uh, Font uh, with uh, Anza to California, um, and that's a really thick book. Where if you're really interested in that, uh, I highly recommend recommend that we use that as a resource, a secondary resource, a lot. Um, and I got this question a few times, and I know you spoke to it a little bit during your presentation, but people are asking, um, the, 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 what was the main objective, and then did they fulfill their objective, um, and what were the results, the true results of the expedition? Um, and then coupled with that, um, did the participants, participants be benefit from going on this journey um, in their own personal lives? Um, and, and then they also are asking about the people of African descent. Did this improve their lives, being on this expedition and being a part of this? or um, and, and if you can elaborate about those, those things. Yes, so the purpose of the expedition was to colonize the, uh, uh, the area that we know, uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco, uh, to create a, a presidio. Um, and the members of the expedition were, um, were offered land and cattle. They came, I didn't mention this, but uh, uh, they came with a thousand head of cattle. So they came with the cattle, um, they were offered land. Uh, a couple of generations later, those were the ranchos and uh, uh, very successful ranchos like uh, the, the Peraltas who, who owned land of what is now Oakland, Berkeley, Albany. Um, uh, and they became very successful until, until the Americans came. <laughs> Um, and I guess I have a, a follow up question, because uh, a lot of these are about the expedition and, and pr pretty detailed questions. And I think, um, you know, the best the best thing would be to, to reach out because we don't have time maybe to get to all these. 
Uh, however, I think, uh, can you give a little more information about um, uh, plans for the commemoration and and um, and what maybe what we can look forward to um, in terms of that that year coming up and 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 then if you have any other future talks or anything that you're planning to do that um, the people in the audience might be able to to uh, be a part of. Sure, we don't um, we don't have current uh, talks planned uh, now. I think COVID has really changed changed how we approach things and. Um, you know, in these coming years, we're, we're really trying to figure out when to work with uh, tribal communities um, to reach out to really what we're in these next couple of years are really trying to craft what does a what does a commemoration really look like? And, uh, because you really are coming to grips with this colonization story. And um, so uh, we're not quite sure, but I think um, definitely want to work with communities and figure out what what that commemoration would really look like. Um, one, uh, one that I've looked to, uh, and although we don't want to, we probably might not recreate it exactly, or, uh, is the Lewis and Clark, uh, had their commemoration and the very public response, uh, or the very public events were, um, traveling along that route, um, with the, uh, uh, it was a tent of many voices and it was, it centered the indigenous population group. Uh, indigenous stories along the, the trail route. I imagine that will be a big part of it. Um, but uh, and also uh, the stories of the members of the expedition, what that looked like, and then where we are today. Wonderful. We're, Thank you. we're taking our first steps on this, and uh, this is part of that that conversation. Well, we feel lucky to be at the, the start of this process that you're going through, and we know you have a lot of work ahead of you, and Anne and, and myself and the whole staff and the and um, here at the Trust are, are really grateful that you've shared your time with our, our audience. And, and we hope everyone in the, in the um, all the attendees tonight um, learned something new. Um, when, when, the, when we're done here, there's gonna be a, a screen will pop up for some feedback. So if you're willing to do a quick one minute survey, that'd be great. Um, you'll also get a follow up email. So if you don't, want, don't wanna do it right away, you'll have, get a reminder about that. If you'd like to come to our um, uh, future lectures, we're gonna have a whole series about Urban development in Santa Barbara um, and the history of, of uh, and, and you know um, they're trying to revitalize the downtown core of Santa Barbara. This huge discussion going on. So there's lots of talks look, um, coming up in in the spring that we're going to be doing over Zoom. So keep uh, keep engaged with us. Uh, if you can see the upcoming events at our website sbthp.org, um, and please visit uh, uh, the National Trail website and the Anza Trail website and and get it. Um, get in touch with Naomi if you have any more questions, because I'm sure she'd be happy to, to answer or point you in the right direction. Um, so once again, thanks for joining us. This is going to be recorded. It'll be on our YouTube and on our um, our lectures lectures webpage on our website. So you can, if you missed part of it or you want to share it, you can uh, do that in the future. It'll probably be up on both those by Monday. Um, I also want to thank all of the descendants of uh, the families of the expedition that are in the audience, and really like to thank all of the people of the, um, who are. Um, in, uh, from indigenous backgrounds that joined us this evening, all the people associated with uh, the, the trust and, and all of the people who haven't been um, a part of any of our programs before, we're really happy that you joined us and we hope you come out for future online events and hopefully soon future in-person events. And if you're in Santa Barbara, um, look us up, see if we're, once COVID's done and traveling open, it, um, opens up, hopefully we'll be able to open up to the public then. Um, and you can see all those updates on our website as well. So I want to thank you so much, Naomi, for joining us. Thank you. All right, everyone have a good evening. <laughs>